Okay, this is lab 109, airflow bench. We're going to show you the video of how we can use the Instron machine. This is Instron machine 5848. And, uh, go ahead. Okay, this is our, uh, crosshead you know this one is the fixed crosshead it doesn't move this one is the the one which moves up and down for tensile compression you can do bending we can determine young smartness Poisson's ratio strength to failure yield strength and so on and so forth so here uh, we'll be showing you a bunch of things you know how to mount a sample on, on Instron one second is how do we change the parameters in the software according to our you know needs second showing you an actual tensile extension test and then we can you know we will show you the plot we get for the force displacement and then we convert it into a stress strain plot to get the young smartness all right thanks all right uh, so here i'll just show you the sequence of how the machine is to be started you know just can randomly come in switch on the equipment. There's a sequence I've written down on the blackboard. You start with the white hover, the, then the uh, black control unit, then you have the Instron machine, you switch it on here. I will show you the, we will, we will show you the exact location of the switches and then the computer. So, say you can zoom in here. This is the, <coughs> the main tower, you switch that on. Now, you know, you, you saw that it's started. Now you go to the, uh, the, this is the control unit here, which is connected to your Instron as well as the data, uh, you know, the computer. So you switch this guy on here. Did you zoom in? Okay. Now we, we got to wait for a few seconds to, you know, there'll be a click sound and then we switch on the Instron. Here's the, the Instron switch that uh, controls your RAM, controls your, uh, no, you're switching on the, it has an environmental, you know, small chamber for elevated testing, elevated temperature testing. So I'll just switch this on now. Okay. And then finally, it's going to be the computer. Okay. All right. Okay, here is I'm going to show you how to mount the sample. First of all, we have two grips here. These grips are uh, coming to different sizes for different loadings. And if, if you can zoom in here, for it, please also, it has a static load cell here that uh, depending on the uh, sample that you want to test, you have to put that static load accordingly. For now, we're going to put 500 Newton and these grips are pretty good for the size of sample that I'm picking right now. It's an aluminum material uh, strip that I'm going to be mounting it on this uh, Instron machine. So there are two actually sc uh, screws on top and bottom that you unscrew this uh, grip and you insert your sample in there. Make sure the sample size and height is fit for that uh, uh, portion that is open. And then you start tightening one area on the bottom, tighten snug it tightly and then on the surface on the top area so after we do that um, we want to make sure that the sample that is mounted is not loose meaning that right now you can see there is a little loose area so what I'm going to do gently use the remote to jog it up just a little bit so we have a correct result Right now it's tight and it's not nice. Sorry. Let me show this control unit. And this is the control unit, so it's manually. You can also, uh, I mean, use the jug up and down, and then uh, control the uh, the system. And also it has a uh, emergency stop, stop in case something goes wrong. Yeah. So you can. There is an em that. emergency stop also here as well. Yes. Here you just press this, and you know you, you move it the, the way of the uh, in the way of the arrows to you know to release it. So. All right. 
So also, uh, as a precaution, we're going to use, uh, make sure that you, you have goggles if you have some kind of a brittle material in case after the breakage there is pieces that may fall into your eyes, so you better use goggles. Okay, thanks. In this portion, we're going to show you how to use the software to uh, basically extract the data from the testing. Uh, Fahad, could you please kindly uh, yeah. explain okay. what things need so, to be done? This is your screen, you know, when you switch on the software, you get this screen, okay? So now there are a couple of things here. One file is you want the parameters of the testing. That is, if you are doing a displacement control or a load control, you want to have, okay, this will be my displacement rate or load rate, you know, uh, 0.5 millimeters per second or 0.1 millimeters per second and so on. And then you gotta also define at what displacement or force your test will stop. So uh, what I'm gonna show now is how do you set those parameters b before you actually do your test. So you, uh, this is your first screen. You go to method, and then you see here, you know, there are a bunch of methods here, you know, which have been done in the past. We could have used one of these, but I just wanted to do, sh show you guys how you create a new test m method. So I do new here, it says tension. You can choose, you know, as you can see, there's a whole list here flexural method, compression, and you know, compression. So we're going to show you a tension, uh, how to do a, a tension test, create. So software is, computer is really slow, so it's going to take a few seconds to, okay, now you see this, uh, okay, system of units, we'll say SI, you can do whatever you want. Then uh, you, you go to control, you see here, control. Uh, can you zoom there, okay. Now, it's an extension, you say tensile extension, and then you say whatever units you want, I, I want millimeters per second, and I'll just say, okay, I'll put a value there. The, you know, ASTM has a standard of testing for, uh, for metals, for polymers, there are different load, uh, you know, displacement rate which you have to do. This is a sample test, it's an aluminum sheet, we'll just say, okay, 0 0.2 uh, millimeters per second. And then you see here end of end of test, the one which I, I was talking about, end test. You say okay, what is your criteria? My criteria is tensile extension. I want to do the test until I reach a certain displacement, right? Okay. So what will be that value? So you, you see right now we are almost you know the crosshead is at zero. And it's 0 0.2 millimeters. So we say okay, we'll go up to you know. 0.45. Oh, just five millimeters, you know, it will just stop after five and it will say stop. So the test will happen and the RAM will stop the moment it reaches five millimeters. Okay? All right. Now you say you, you have this. Now you go to data. Data capture, you just do default. Now you go to uh, reports okay now here is I want two things from here first is I want uh, I want to export this this was actually the challenge which me and Saeed were having from last few days we were able to do the test but we were not able to retrieve the data because we could not get here which we are showing you now so you'll say export both the files explore export raw data export Results. So it will give you a dot raw file. It will open in Notepad, and you can transfer it to Excel by you know just importing it and then delimiting it. And you know it, it's 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 very make easy. your own it's, graph, yeah, whatever. Yeah, you want. exactly. So and then we, that, we specify an output path here. This is important. Where do I want this data to go? Okay, I say browse. I created a folder which said sample test November third. I just click there. I'll say okay. So now this data is going to go there. All my results are going to go there, and you know I also requested for a PDF. This will just give you a a, a graph of the you know uh, force displacement curve generated by the software itself. You, you can generate yours using Excel as well. Okay. Now I say uh, save. Now save method. I just now I'm saving the method, which is you know the parameters which we had, right? You know the the displacement rate and, and all. Now we save that, we just save it on the desktop, we'll say, okay, sample, uh, sample test, okay, let's say sample test and save that. 
Now we're going to show you how to actually run the test and uh, it's the last step basically, not the last last step, but just show you how actually the test is done. So <coughs> there is a click button here. Okay, after this is the start, this is the stop, return, reset, finish. We'll start now. All our parameters are set. The, the sample is, is there. Now what you got to do is it will test it according to you, the parameters which you, you gave, specified. Which you specified. So I, I, you know, I just say start and can you please uh, zoom? Okay, you start. No. Okay. Maybe you can zoom there. It's going to be it's very slow. It's slow speed, so it's hard to see, but we can see hopefully when yeah. it... Yeah. Or you can probably show the... You can see it's stretching. Yeah. Some so, noise. Yeah, yeah. You can see. That's what we want. The sample for a valid valid test, you want the sample to f fail in the, in the gauge length. Yes. If there is a failure somewhere here towards the grips, that means because there is stress concentration towards the grips, right? It's, it's, it's holding there. But this is a valid test because we saw the failure in the gauge length. Okay, here is the, just if you can show them the plot, you know, you see a nice force displacement, it went up. This is the time it kind of reaches, you know, came down failure. And then you see, because since there was no resistance, it was, you know, it cracked you see just displacement, there's no force. It just, it, this line will just keep going on straight. So that this portion is the linear portion. Mm -hmm. That's where you actually get your young modulus. It's uh -huh. come from the linear, actually. Uh, from the start of the test, elastic the yield portion. point. Yes. Yield point. And that's from here is the yield point, and it's going to start going down as the crack starts.